Hey everybody, welcome back. This is video four of five of our AFP knee examination video series. We're gonna go right into special tests for the meniscus. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my patient turn and face me. We're gonna go through Thessaly's examination. I'm gonna grab my patient's hands because I wanna make sure that my patient does not fall down or topple over with this examination. So I'm gonna have her put all of her weight on her left foot there. I'm gonna have her bend to approximately 30 degrees. And then I'm gonna have her twist on that knee. Good, go ahead and relax, thank you. So what we're looking for there is we're looking for replication of that same pain that your patient came into clinic complaining of. Um, and what that is also supposed to do is that is supposed to replicate that mechanism in which the meniscus is typically torn. Another examination that we can do from this aspect when we have our patient standing up next to the examination table is a modified Nobles test. Nobles test is testing for distal IT band friction syndrome. So what I'm gonna have my patient do I'm just gonna have her squat while I apply a little bit of pressure on that lateral femoral condyle. So I'll go ahead and have her squat and go ahead and come back up. Good, and do it one more time for me, come down to about 90 degrees. Good, go ahead and come back up. Wonderful. So what I'm doing there by applying pressure at that lateral femoral condyle, I'm trying to replicate that distal IT band friction syndrome. Typically in patients who have this condition, at approximately 30 degrees of flexion with that pressure on that lateral femoral condyle, it will replicate their pain. All right, so we're gonna go right into our McMurray's examination. This is another test for the meniscus. So what I have my patient do, I have them at about 90 degrees. I have my hand over top of the joint line. My other hand is down at the foot, wrapping around the heel so that I've got a good grip on this foot here. So what I do first is I apply a valgus force on the knee. I apply an external rotation down here at the tibia by way of my grip on the foot, and I allow that leg to go into extension. So what I'm doing here is I am testing that medial compartment, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for more of a feel for a click or a big clunk. If I have a click or a clunk and there's pain associated with it, that is a positive McMurray's test. When I am testing the other side of the knee, what I do is I apply a varus force on the knee right here. My hands are still along the joint line. My other hand is still wrapped around this heel. And now what I'm doing is I'm applying the varus force here at the knee. I'm internally rotating the tibia distally, and I'm allowing that knee to come out into extension. And what I'm feeling for here is a click or a clunk and reproduction of pain. And if I have that, that is a positive McMurray's test. If you combine both sides at the same time, you get this nice fluid motion that looks sort of like this. And in that way, I'm testing both sides of the knee. All right, so we're gonna go right into some of the special tests for the patella. So one of the most common tests is called the patellar apprehension test. The way that this test is performed is the examiner places medial force on the patella and tries to move it laterally. Now in our patient, we don't have a lot of mobility here. What you're looking for though is whenever you're applying this medial to lateral force on that patella, you're trying to see if that causes the patient to be apprehensive, if they feel like that kneecap is gonna fall out of its usual place. Um, and you can see that our patient does not have a positive apprehension test. Another test that we like to perform is a patellar grind test. There are multiple different ways to perform this. One of the most common ways is having your patient come up to approximately 90 degrees. The examiner places their hand over top of that patella and I'm compressing it now. Other hand down here to control the rest of the leg. And you bring that patient into passive flexion and extension while you're applying that pressure over top of that knee. And if that reproduces the patient's pain, you're more concerned for a patellofemoral pain syndrome or patellar maltracking. Another test that I typically incorporate whenever I'm evaluating the patella, I do something called a milking maneuver to test for an effusion in the knee. There are multiple ways to do this, so I'm gonna show a couple different ways. One of the most common ways is to just take the examiner's hands on either side of that knee, apply pressure, and essentially apply a milking maneuver uh, along that knee to push any fluid that might potentially be there toward the joint line. Examiner's fingers on either side of the knee, you can feel if there's any sort of addition of effusion or addition of any fluid in there if your fingers are 
are feeling any sort of area of belotement. Another way to test this is to perform a belotement test, which is where you do pretty much the same thing. You apply the pressure to either side of the knee, and you have a finger or two on top of that patella. And what you're doing is you're trying to see if that patella kind of floats right in there after you're applying pressure on the rest of the capsule. Mm -hmm.